Okay folks, I'm, um, I'm sorry about the interruption but I, well the camera, um, camera's memory was full so it cut off midstream. I'll, uh, I'll try to pick up where I left off. Uh, if you remember I was talking about the concentricity of the hole uh, and how I'd measured the, um, the thicknesses of the wall on between the hole and uh, the nut body. Um, however, since mounting it in my own 3-jar chuck, uh, I have noticed that it isn't running perfectly true, okay? Now, that would impact upon your thread, obviously. And since talking to you, I put the clock gauge on the outside the diameter of the bolt and uh, disengaged the uh, clutch so that the chuck was easier to rotate and um, I was getting about 20 thou run out on the, um, the clock. Now that's not very good eh? Um, I can do a lot better than that. Um, now all I did was undo the chuck, rotate the, the shaft a few degrees and tighten the chuck up again and then took another reading on my clock after having it zeroed on the top dead centre point. <coughs> I reduced it to 10 thou run out this time. That's still not very good, okay? Um, but I'm tempted to let it go at that because I, I just don't have the time to mess around with it. But I am trying to improve upon the nut that's already on the shaft of the grinder and if I rush it and make a or so it, then this has all been for naught, okay? So, off camera I might try and improve upon that a bit more yet. Uh, since speaking to you last, I've been home and I've uh, unloaded or copied the, all the files off the camera onto the PC and I've reviewed some of the uh, footage I've uh, taken. Um, one of the things I omitted to mention was that uh, while I told you that I had ground the tool up to match the 55 degrees Whitworth thread form, uh, I never mentioned that you have to ensure that the tool is running parallel to the internal diameter of the hole. Now, I can't do that easily. But what you can do is ensure it's running parallel to the outside diameter. And that's just simply a case of making sure that the, the thread gauge is flat against the body whilst the, the, uh, the tip of the tool is correctly uh, meshing or interfacing with the thread form. Now, you simply, you know, wind the tool in, out of the way, line up your thread, thread gauge with the tool, but ensuring that the flat faces are hard against the, uh, the body of whatever you're machining. And then using the uh, cross slide and saddle um, handles, or you could use a top slide handle if you wish. Um, wind the, the tool out until it is meshing correctly with the, the thread form gauge. If it doesn't, you have to adjust the tool uh, either out or in until it does. All right. So it takes a little bit of uh, time, but that's I did that also last night. Okay. Now, um, having reviewed my video footage, there was a few things I wanted to touch upon and recap. That was one of them. Uh, I wanted to finish talking about the, um, the clock gauge and I've done that. And, uh, oh yeah, that was the other thing. The other thing you've got to remember is to ensure that your tool is at the correct centre height. This lathe has a centre height of three and a half inches. 
Okay. Uh, this is a little <coughs> taste bar I made up. I'm not entirely happy with it. It was just a bit of scrap of steel. It might have been a bolt or something that had lying around. I machined it and uh, faced it off to three and a half inches. In all fairness, it's maybe very, very slightly over three and a half inches. But when I move that up there now, well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that flat on the, the on the bed of the lathe, and I'll move the the tool out. I don't know if I'll be able to focus on this. I'll try though. All right. The tip of the tool is just very slightly under the top of. Uh, depth gauge or height gauge it's barely perceptible with your fingertip now my fingertips a bit burnt the skin's a bit rough on them so it's, um, my uh, sensitivity isn't what it used to be but I can still feel that yeah now the, the height gauge is a little bit off uh, in so much that it's longer or higher than it should be I'll take a quick measurement it's, it's just very very slightly over the three and a half if you give me a moment here I'll try and uh, adjust my camera position I'm very conscious of the time because time just seems to go so rapidly. Right, okay. I need to adjust the focus also. I'm really uh, disappointed with the focus on this camera. When it does focus, it focuses very well. But often as not, it focuses on a surface that you've got no interest in. Picking the bar up now with the vernier, just by gripping it between you know, with my thumb, look at that, yeah. And there is three well it's, it's, it's just over the three and a half inch. I don't know how if you can how clearly you can see that. But I'll try to move that now. I'll take my thumb off the, the catch, okay? And then I'll just gently slip the vernier over the top of the thread thread form. Well, not the thread form, sorry. The height gauge. And now I'll try to zoom in on the um, the actual reading. Like I say, I'm really unimpressed with the focusing mechanism on this camera. This is the Samsung uh, WD150 I believe. It's high definition, 14.2 megapixels. Um, it's got a Schneider lens. 18 times zoom, high day. Oh, WB for Bertie 150. That's the, the model number of the, the camera. So it's, you know, for. I paid about 90 quid for it, so. I guess you get what you pay for. Right, okay. going to waste any more time on this folks it's like I said it's ah, look at that uh, on the last um, gasp it, it focuses 
Um, that there is three point five inches, and then whatever you can discern there, it's within five thousandths of an inch anyway, you know. Well, if you notice over here, you've got point. 001 of an inch, so that's tenths, hundreds, thousandths. So you've got 25 thousandths um, increments here, and the zero is just past the five, and this five is just this five thousandths is just under. So it's one of these increments here that will be uh, accurately measuring with. Not that one, not that one. Two thousandths maybe, I'd say one thousandth is just over. So I'd say about two thousandths over three and a half inch. So that's, you know, for most purposes that's pretty good, eh? If I say so myself. Now. As long as I set my tool to just underneath that, it should be bang on, eh? As long as you don't have a bit of swark underneath it, eh? Right. So, uh, what next? I've covered the gearing. I've covered poking the piece using a, a needle. Uh, oh, did I? Uh, did I mention? using a, a needle clock. Uh, all I've got is the, one of these standard uh, dial test indicators or uh, clock gauges. They've got a plunger action. It's fine for the majority of the work that you do on uh, certainly at home or in uh, a hobbyist's um, environment. However if you want to clock an internal bore then a little needle gauge is uh, very useful. Uh, instead of having a, a linear movement up and down like your dial test indicator or clock gauge has, it has a, a little arm or a little needle that sticks out and you can adjust that any way you want yeah and it has a sort of rotational movement yeah it goes up and down in so much that it hinges on a knuckle you know so it's very much like a finger and it just operates in that sort of manner and you can sort of get it adjusted to any sort of place you want so it's running on an internal bore and then any um, a misalignment is recorded in the rotational oscill or oscillation of the needle okay <clears throat> I don't know how else to put it hope that's relatively clear. Uh, I intend on getting on at some point. Uh, I don't think it's it's overkill, you know, clocking up a nut. But I do want this nut to um, seat correctly on the grinding wheel. Because the grinding wheel has very little of a register to, to run upon. And I want to get, make sure that the grinding wheel is as accurate as possible for grinding tooling, okay? So, in this instance, I might be making more of it than needs to be, but I think if I can eliminate uh, any issue with the nut, and this, I've already eliminated the bearings and the spindle, then I know it's the grinding wheel. And so far, all I've spent money on is two bearings that cost me a fiver. Uh, on the restoration of the the grinding uh, bench grinder. If this nut doesn't work and I'm still having issues, then I'm looking at buying a, a, a new uh, grinding disc. And I've already sourced sourced um, a few options. The cheapest being about a tenner, uh, and a, a sort of quality disc costing costing about twenty quid. 
Great. Uh, that's 20 minutes already, folks. Sorry there's not been a lot of action in this video, but um, hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. And um, I'll catch you again soon. Bye for now.